We'll open up in a word of prayer and then we'll hand back over to the praise and worship team. Lord, we praise you, Lord, once again that we are found in your house this morning, Lord. Another opportunity for us to gather together just to lift your precious name on high, Lord. And Lord, we know that you're already here this morning, that you're already part of our number, Lord. And Lord, we pray as we as we praise and worship you, Lord, that you would be glorified and lifted on high this morning. Lord, you're so worthy of our praise, Lord. Lord, we couldn't even begin to think of the amount of blessings, Lord, that you have surrounded each of us with, Lord, not just individually, but, Lord, our families and our fellowship here as well, Lord. Lord, you have been so faithful, and we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, accept our praise for who you are, Lord, the King of kings yes, and the Lord of lords this Hallelujah. morning, Lord. Lord, as we gather around your table a little bit later on, Lord, another opportunity for us to remember what you did at Calvary, Lord, another opportunity to remember what you did at the cross, Lord. And Lord, once again, Lord, we pray that you would accept our praise and that you would accept our thanks later on as we gather around the table. Lord, bless Pastor as he brings your word later on as well, Lord. And Lord, as we pray every time that we meet, we pray again this morning, Lord, that there be somebody here this morning, somebody still to come in, Lord, somebody watching at home who doesn't know you as Saviour, Lord, will you speak to them today, Lord? And Lord, that we would see somebody get right with you. Lord, we'll be mindful to give you and you alone the glory. Lord, Lord, for those that, that need a touch from you, Lord, Lord, you know there are people who would love to be here this morning, but for whatever reason, they've had to stay at home, Lord. Lord, we know that there's also people who have managed to make it out this morning, but they still need a touch from you, Lord. Lord, you know each and every individual, yes. you know each and every situation, Lord, and that fills us with great reassurance, Lord, to know that you're an all-knowing God. So Lord, we pray for those that need a touch, Lord, that you would just place your healing hand upon them, Lord, that you bring them back to full health and strength, Lord. Anybody that would be worried or concerned or anxious about anything, will you just pour in that peace, Lord, which we can't explain, that peace which surpasses all understanding, Lord, not as the world gives, but as you give, Lord. So Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for everything, and we ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. Bless you.
Written on your face 
Bless you, Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to come around the Lord's table. Let's continue to praise and worship for what He has done. Hallelujah. Look at what's said every single week. Well, there's another week has passed into eternity. And every second that we were here, He was with us. Praise you, Lord. What a wonderful, wonderful fellow. Let's bless Him. Let's praise Him this morning. David, over to you, brother. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. You, the Lord Jesus, as your Savior this morning, uh, please, please be free to break bread with us at home as well. Who was we're singing there, Lest I Forget Gethsemane, Lest I Forget Thine Agony. You know, we'll gather around this table each Lord's Day just to remember, just to remember what he did for, the other, for each of us at the cross, just to remember the pain and the suffering that he went through, all the name calling and belittling that he went through. We remember the unconditional love that he has for each of us. But we'll gather around this table each week to remember these things. But this isn't a memorial this morning, because memorials are for dead people. Mm -hmm. We serve a risen Savior this morning, who's alive and well. When they rolled that stone away, they said, he is not here, for he is risen. Come see where he lay. We we'll thank and praise him this morning that he is alive and well, seated at the right hand of the Father, and that he is our coming king this morning. We do indeed look forward to that day when we will praise him face to face whenever we meet him in the air. So many things we thank him for. As I said at the start, so many blessings that we wouldn't even begin to be able to count them. There's things he blesses with that go unnoticed. There's things that he blesses us with that we take for granted. He blesses us individually and he blesses us collectively. And we we'll thank and praise him for each of these blessings. But we thank and praise him especially for the cross and for what he did for each of us that day. If it wasn't for the shedding of his precious blood, we know that there'll be no remission of sins. And we know that for those of us that have accepted him as saviour, that we are covered this morning, that we are forgiven this morning. We have the victory through him and our chains have been broken. And we'll give him all the glory and all the praise this morning. Just as the emblems are being passed around, take your opportunity this morning just to say thank you and praise the Lord for what he did on the cross for each of us. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, he ever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. The service to come forward,
Do come, and Father, just thank you, Lord, again. Lord, we ever come in, Lord. I lay around your table, Lord, this morning. And take, Lord, tell them, Lord. And Lord, we thank of thee, Lord, on that cross, Lord. And Lord, you rose again, Lord. And Lord, you look at us, Lord. And God, someday, Lord, we will be with thee, Lord. And dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us, Lord, mm -hmm. this week even, Lord. Lord, you never leave us to forsake us, Lord. You're always there for us, Lord. Lord, things you could do, Lord, you're there too with us, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, this morning, Lord, for saving my soul. Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. Yes, amen. So rich, Lord. Lord God, rich. We don't know, Lord, how rich it is, Lord. We know you live in our hearts, Lord. We know you love us, Lord, and you live within us, Lord. And you, oh, Lord God, you're always there for us, Lord, no matter Jesus. what time or where, Lord. And God, you always guide us, Lord, the right way, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, for everything you've done, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for everyone, Lord, that you need, Lord, and touch, Lord. Amen. Lord, yes. yes. Help us to realize, Lord, there's only me, you, Lord. Lord, what will we do without you, Lord? Yes. Jesus. Oh, dear God, where will it be, Lord? Yes. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the day, Lord, that you saved us, Lord. You saved our soul, Lord. You, Lord. you looked down upon us, Lord, and you reached down for us, Lord. All such love, what kind of love is yes. this? We'll never understand or we'll take it in, Lord. Because, Lord, it's a you, the holy God. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, who died and hung on that cross for us, Lord. And Lord, what you went through, Lord? Oh, dear God, you even cried out, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus. Oh, Lord, who is still pleading for our souls. He still loved us the same, no matter what was wrong or what they were doing, Lord. Lord, again, I just thank you, Lord, we will come here and remember thee and take off, Lord, and think of your blood, Lord. Lord, when you look at us, Lord, you see the bloodline. Oh, God, what a miracle, Lord. Lord, you see Jesus, Lord, yes. because, Lord, you live in our hearts, Lord. And, Lord, you know each and every one of us. You know all about us, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for everything. That bless you, Lord. Me, Lord. And, Lord, God, bless these hearts this morning, Lord. Yes. Bless them fondly, Lord. Mm -hmm. Help them, Lord, God, to take your holy word that we study, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, we will come, Lord, and listen all about thee, Lord. Oh, God, help us to take it in and understand. Jesus. Lord, again, I just thank you, Lord, for everything. Amen. Lord. Bless you, Lord. Praise your holy name. Lord, 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 Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. Amen. For yea, Lord, is my strength and my soul. He also has become my salvation. Yes. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Amen. And in that day, you will say, Praise the Lord. Oh, yes. Call upon his name. Declare his deeds among the peoples. Mm. Make mention that his name is exalted. Yes. Sing, O oh Lord, yes. for he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Yes. Cry out and shout. O inhabitants of Zion, yes. for great is yes. the Holy One Amen. of Israel, yes, yes. who is in our midst. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The King of Kings is in the midst Jesus. of us. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Oh, glory to God. Thank you for keeping me, Father, this mm. morning. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for each and every one of us that's sitting in this sanctuary this morning, Lord. We have sang your praises, Lord. And now as we come to your word, Lord, give us hearts to embrace it, Lord, and wisdom to understand it, Lord. Jesus. Oh, Jesus, bless the pastor now, Lord, as he would take up your word yes. and feed us, Lord, the, his earthly flock, Lord. And Lord, may we be blessed this morning. Yes. We never go out the way we come in, Lord. Yes. So help us this morning, Father, now, to sit, Lord, and listen to your word. Jesus. That you have given to us. Bless you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, your word. Thank you, Lord. Lord, your word. Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Oh, bless the Lord. Yes, amen. Lord, we thank you, Lord, especially for the cross and for what you did willingly there for each and every single one of us, Lord. Lord, how you willingly went through all through that pain and suffering for each of us, Lord, through all that belittling, Lord, through all that name calling for each and every single one of us. Bless Lord. the Lord. Lord, because of your unconditional, unwavering love, knowing that we would let you down every single day, you still chose to work Calvary. And we thank you and we praise you for that. Lord, we say this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of life. Yes, amen. Lord, thank you, Lord, that because of the shedding of your precious blood, Lord, that we are washed whiter than snow, Lord. Bless the Lord. And thank you, Lord, that our chains are broken, mm. and that we can stand here in victory this morning, knowing that we are free because of what you did for us on the cross. Again, Lord, the word of thank you seems to be so little, but Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for what you went through for each of us. Bless Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, that you are alive and well this morning. Thank and praise you that you are our risen Savior, Lord. Yes. Lord, when they rolled that stone away, Lord, you weren't there because you were alive and well, Lord. And we will thank you, Lord, that you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. And we do indeed look forward to that day, Lord, for your return, and we will praise you face to face. Lord, we thank you for these emblems, Lord, for the bread that represents your body broken for us, Lord, for the cup which represents your blood shed for us, Lord. Yeah. And Lord, we just thank you again, Lord, for Calvary and for what you did for each of us, Lord. Lord, as we hand over to Pastor and I, Lord, as we always pray every week, Lord, we thank you for Pastor and we thank you for Lynn, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the blessing that they are to us and to this fellowship, Lord. Jesus. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that you just have your hedge of protection around them, not just the both of them, but their entire family circle, Lord. Lord, that you keep them safe, that you keep them healthy, Lord, that you keep them well, Lord. Lord, we know that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. And our prayer is, Lord, that you would give them fruits for their labor, Lord. That we would even hear in coming days that somebody has got right with you this morning, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, for those of us that are here watching at home, Lord, give us listening ears and open hearts for what we're going to hear. We ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Thank you, David. Good morning again, folks. Good morning. Good, morning. Good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Just to continue on our little look at spiritual growth and spiritual blessings. And last week we looked at spiritual hindrances. If you have your Bible with you, you can turn with me to the book of Ephesians, please, and chapter 1. This morning I want to think about the spiritual blessings. Uh, we could list so, so many, but there are quite a few here mentioned in the, this uh, wonderful first chapter of the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 1, please. We just want to read one verse because a lot of other verses to look at in a moment or two's time. Verse 3 says this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Let me read that to you again because that is a powerful little verse. Blessed, that simply means happy. Be the God. And Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And we know the Lord will bless yeah, sure. the reading of his word. As we already said, we have already considered spiritual <coughs> growth or spiritual development and how that we can grow in God and grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine thinking that. You know, sometimes we think we've, we know it all. And sometimes we think we've got it all together. You know, I, I love it when you come to the Word again, you, you learn something new. Well, we have always said in our house, it says, every day is a school day. And it's so, so true. You learn something new every single day of life. And thank God for that. And it's even more wonderful when you learn something from the Word of God. When you've been mining a wee bit and you find a little gem, and you hang on, and you go, oh, that's good. It's food for the soul. It blesses your heart and does you good. But we can grow spiritually. Grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And spiritually, day by day, we can become more Christ-like. I believe each and every one of us would like to be like that. We don't want to be ourselves anymore. We want to be imitators of Christ. We want when people see us, they don't see you, but they see Christ in you. The hope of glory. 
I believe each and every one of us are on the same page there as well too. You know, when we consider the spiritual hindrances and how difficult it can be to live for Christ in this present evil age. That's the only way you can describe it. It's a present evil age. No matter what we try and do, no matter what we, no matter how, how even we pray, it's not going to change things. And I, I don't, I'm a firm believer in prayer, but it's going to get worse. And it's going to get worse. And I will say this, folks. How bad would this world be if the saints weren't praying for it? If there was no restraint? There's going to come a day, folks, where there'll be no restraint. Because we'll be taken up and taken home. And that'll be the, the place we'll be left for a time of tribulation. Aren't you glad, folks, that we'll not be there? Bless you, Lord. You know, I was just thinking ahead to uh, future times should the Lord tarry. There are lots of little things, you know, when it comes to the end times. That I believe that we should start to consider. I believe these are the last days of grace. When I talk about the last days, it could be the last 24 hours. Everything I believe has been set in place for the Lord's return. Now I'm not talking about the return of the Son of Man. I'm talking about the Lord's return to the sky. When we, his willing people, will be caught up in rapture uh, to meet the Lord in the air. I believe we should start looking at things again. And what's going to happen and a, and a time yet to come. So perhaps when we come into the autumn, with the Lord's help, we'll take a look at that, and we'll have a Q and A. Like that's a good thing. You better know what you're saying whenever you're whenever you're saying it, and have the have the answers if you can get the answers as well too. Because folks, the truth of the matter is this: the word of God's the word of God. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. I was always told by my mum, if you don't understand something, son, you ask a question. Your teachers are paid well enough. Ask them questions. Stick your hand in the air. And I went, but I might look stupid. So what? Look stupid. Folks, when it comes to the things of God, ask questions. Ask the right questions. Ask the right people. And you'll praise the Lord to get the right answers. But I want to say something this morning to encourage you. In this last day of June 2024, we'll take a quick consideration at the wonderful spiritual blessings that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. I know we've looked at them in a time past. I'm sure we've perhaps preached upon them many, many times. But let's come this morning with a fresh pair of eyes. Let's come this morning as if we never knew anything of the spiritual blessings of God. And look at them and just say, oh yes, glory to God. I thank you Lord for every single one. We, we enjoy them and we experience them every single day. So the first one. I want to consider this morning is his great salvation. It is the greatest blessing of all. As you read down through this wonderful little chapter here, you will see it. The greatest blessing that Paul says to the church that to know him. Folks, to know him. Is there anything better than knowing him? Well, folks, I, the, the only thing that I believe that can match it is this. That he knows us. We know him. And he knows us. We are the flock of his pasture, and he is the great shepherd, praise the Lord. In this incredible chapter of Ephesians 1, we see so many of these blessings. We see his salvation in that he has chosen us before the foundation of the world. Now, folks, I will never fully understand that scripture, but I'm simple enough to believe this. That before this world even was formed, when the darkness covered this earth and there was no form or void, and we go back to Genesis chapter 1, that the Lord thought of you. Isn't that an incredible, yes, incredible thought? That out of this seven billion or so people who are alive today on this earth, God thought of you before anything else was even formed. We think of all the billions of people who have lived down throughout the ages. He thought of you and he chose you. Oh, glory to God. He chose you to be a sheep of his flock. Uh, folks, there are many flocks out there today. But you know, uh, 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 wonderful that we're part of his. The Lord has chosen us to be his own. We looked at it there very briefly on Tuesday evening, Psalm 100. And somebody says this, he made us. He made us. I know he formed us in our mother's womb, but spiritually he made us to be the sheep of his pasture. We didn't make ourselves. Hallelujah. He made us what? Holy and blameless. He made us to be what? A holy nation. To be a peculiar people. A chosen generation. 
A royal priesthood, Peter tells us in 1 Peter 2 and verse 9. John 17 and 3, the Lord Jesus is speaking. and says, and this is, this is life eternal, that they may know the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. There's only one God. There are many little gods. There are little, little small G gods. There's only one capital G Amen. God. Bless and his name is Yahweh. He is El Shaddai. He is Elohim. He is Eli. He is the great, great God. Hallelujah. Praise and God. he knows you. He sought us. He bought us with his precious blood. And we have been bought with a very great price. What a spiritual blessing to know this morning that you're saved and that you're chosen in him. We could just go home now. But you know, there's more. God is a God of so much more. And I love how they continue. Verse 5 of this wonderful chapter this is our second point. It's another spiritual blessing. You are a child of the king. You have been adopted. Hallelujah. The sad reality is this. When we think of adoption, we think of children that have been unwanted and they've been, and they've been brought in. That's similar enough. Because the devil, he hated us. The devil, our father in a time past, beat us, wounded us, marred us even. But this family that we were brought into, with our wonderful father who is in heaven, has brought us into this incredible family of God. And we have been brought in. But we're not the, we're not the also run. We're not the wee runt. We're none of those things. Christ is the head and we're the body. Christ is the husband and we are the bride. We have been we are something very special in his sight. Hallelujah. We have been adopted. You know, we, we laugh. There's a, there's a wonderful little meme. And you'll come across it, no doubt, of a ginger cat. And it's hissing and spitting as they do. <laughs> and its owner says, you're adopted. And the cat, you think it's speaking, goes, wow. <laughs> I sat there the other day and I was laughing at it. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me. I'm adopted. <coughs> wow. Praise, Praise the Lord. Who would want the likes of me? He did. Because we go back to our first point. Because he chose me from before the foundation of the earth. And now the earth is here with its wonderful form. Glory to God. He has brought me in. He has adopted me. Once I was a child of wrath. Spiritually I was doing the will of my father the devil. But now through his grace I have been received into his wonderful, wonderful kingdom. I can say and you can say this morning. I have been adopted by the King of Kings, hallelujah. I am an heir and I am a joint heir with Christ. You know, when you think of those who have been adopted in, when the will's written, well, they maybe get a wee bit at the end. No, no, no. That's not the way. We've been brought in all of the riches of glory. We have got a storehouse above us and a God who wants to pour out and pour out and pour out again. And I'm not talking about material things. And as they bless you materially, hallelujah, he has. I'm talking about spiritual things this morning. Things that don't rust up. Things that the, 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 the thieves can't come and steal away. Praise the Lord. We can approach the Father this morning by calling him Abba. Through that Christ's wonderful atoning work. We've been saved. We've been chosen. We've been adopted. We've been called out of darkness. We sang earlier into his marvelous light. John 10 verses 27 and 28. The Lord Jesus speaking again. He says, my sheep know my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. You follow them close. Can you hear the shepherd's voice this morning? Can you hear them throughout the week? Hallelujah, I hope you do. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. And no one shall snatch them out of my hand. What a wonderful place. What a wonderful position you're in this morning. No one shall snatch them out of my hand. Beautiful thought. We are his, praise the Lord. Adopted. Galatians 4 verses 5 to 7 speaks of the adoption of sons. John 1 verse 12 tells us this. But as many as received him. He's chosen you. But you've received him. Unto them give me what? I don't like these new translations. It says right in passage. No, no, no. It says unto them give he power. Yeah. Don't lessen yourself. Power. Glory to God. To be, to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. Quickly, number three. We also have been accepted into the beloved. I love how Paul speaks to the saints. 
but he often calls them beloved. We are part of the beloved. We are part of the well-beloved. There are many wonderful blessings, but you've been accepted into the beloved. Whether you're saved five seconds or you're saved 50 years or more, you've been accepted into the beloved. And go back in the previous verse that we read, and no one shall pluck them out of my hand. You've been brought in, glory to God. Oh, he that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out, he tells us. We've been brought into this wonderful of grace. He accepts us no matter our background, no matter what you've done. God's not interested in how bad a sinner you are. He knows. He knows exactly what sort of person you are. He knows what makes you tick. He knows exactly what's in your mind. He knows what's in the depths of your heart and the depths of your soul. He's not worried. He still loves you. He didn't start loving you the moment you were saved. He loved you the moment that you were that little spark within your mother's womb. And even before that, he loved you before the foundation of the earth. Oh, hallelujah. I'm excited about this this morning. God's word thrills my heart, you know. Oh, hallelujah. Folks, in spite of your favor, your failures and all of the mistakes that you have made, you're still accepted in the beloved. Here's the, here's the wonderful, I don't Greek, please. I've always said this, I never quote Greek because there was somebody sitting in the room who flew into it. But one thing I do know this, that this word, accepted in the beloved, in the Greek, is the word canto, which simply means this, highly favored. Can I sit down yeah, that? Or do you want more? Hallelujah. Yeah. Highly favored. Yeah. Accepted in the beloved. Pretty canto cool. or chanto, whatever it is. If it was chanto, we'd be chanting all the way, would we not? Hallelujah. Because we're highly favored in him. Accepted in the beloved. In the well beloved. Chosen. Adopted. You know, Spurgeon, he said in one of his sermons that those accepted are the objects of the divine delight. We are the object. We bring God delight. We thrill his heart. The very thought of that. We thrill God. My, my, my. We have been accepted. Nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. In all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. A fourth point. Well, it's Paul, but I'm taking those way in mind this morning. He also goes on to say that we've been redeemed. I love that old hymn. I'll even ask that you sing worship. Will you not put it on your list that we can sing it? Redeemed. How I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. God help you if it goes on to the list. You'll be singing it every week. Twice on a Sunday perhaps. As I love it. Redeemed. How I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redemption through his blood. Christ has paid the price that we couldn't pay. We're no longer. I was looking at that one there throughout the week. There's another wee song that they sing. We're no longer slaves to sin. Yeah, yeah. We're children of the Most High God. Yeah. Hallelujah. No longer slaves to the devil. No longer slaves to the flesh. Nor to this present evil world. We can stand up and say, like the song in the song of Solomon, Solomon 6 and verse 3, I am my beloved. He is mine. What a wonderful, wonderful thought. Through his death I am free. I have a new creation. I have a new life. I have a new hope. I have a life worth living. I have a brand new destiny. A heavenly home awaits. And we can declare with an absolute assurance that we are blood-bought, spirit-filled temples of the Holy Ghost. We're his. Accepted. Redeemed. Adopted. Chosen. He died for us, folks. Let's live lives for him. Glorify God in our lives and show him, him daily our great appreciation of how we love him for what he has done for us. I heard a preacher there recently sharing a story. He was preaching for a brave bit away from his home in America. He got a phone call from his brother to say, your father's ill, seriously ill. And he says, he might not make it, so you need to come home. So of course he did. He says he got, he got, he got back home again. I went into the hospital room and he's sitting with his father. And the two of them were chatting. And the screens around them, and the two of them were chatting. And they weren't talking about just the day-to-day -day things of life. They were talking about God. They were talking about the scriptures. They were getting excited about being saved. And as they were talking about the great things about being saved, a little nurse popped her head around the curtain and she says, would you two men be Christians? 
Do I suppose the man said, oh yeah, we are. So she says, well, I recently get saved. She says, I'm saved about a month now. And of course they looked at her and said, well, glory to God, it's wonderful. And the old man said this to her. You know, he says, it's something great to have, you know. Especially when you come to my time of life. You're coming to the end of the road. It's a wonderful thing to have. And the young girl says, it is, you know. She says, but it's something very special to have at the beginning of the road as well. <laughs> glory to God. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. No matter what you're sick, I said, you're still five seconds or 50 years. May that fire never go out. May we always have that passion for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's special at the beginning. It's special in the middle. And it's special at the end. You know, my prayer is often that little co the gospel chorus. Just a closer walk with thee, Lord. You know, to the seer, folks. So there's nothing greater. Nothing greater. You can keep your lottery. You can keep your pools, even if they still do that. You can keep all those things. I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather just be him and me. That's the truth. And nothing else. And of course, our next simple point. It tells us that we have our sins forgiven. So Christ redeemed us. Our sins are forgiven. The debt of sin has been cancelled. We can begin to sing that old, old hymn at the cross. Where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. Glory to God. The debt of sin has been cancelled. The burden of my heart is rolled away. As I said, when there by faith I receive my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Sometimes I have to tell my face to be happy, but the soul's delight in Christ. Glory to God. 1 John 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Praise the Lord this morning. Folks, I can stand here and say I'm not perfect, but I'm forgiven. We're called upon his name, and he has saved us. In like 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, we humbled ourselves, didn't we? We prayed, glory to God. We turned away from our, our wicked ways, and he forgave. And what I think is wonderful about this, you know, is I'll bring this short message to a close. If you notice all these blessings I've spoken about so far, every single one of them all point back to one thing. They point back to the fact of the cross. You notice all these aforementioned spiritual blessings are to do with your standing before God. What's that tell me? It's got nothing to do with your feelings. You might feel rotten. You might feel undone. You might feel unjust. You might feel as if you're beaten up. You might feel stinking within your spirit, stinking within your body. All of those things. That has got nothing to do with your standing before God. Your position doesn't change. Your feelings may change. Thank God it's all about feelings. Well, we're all up and down, are we not? We're like a chicken York and we're up, we're up, we're down, we're down. And some of us are never half, we're up, we're down. Yeah, that's, the truth. that's the way we are. It's got nothing to do with that. It's all about our position in Christ. Glory to God. We can rejoice that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You remember when the Lord Jesus sent them all out to do a work for them, they come back. Oh, and they were all excited. We have got authority over demons. We have got authority over sickness. We have got authority over all these things. And the Lord says, you're missing the whole point of all. That's great. Your name's written in heaven. You know, here's the thought, folks. Isn't it wonderful to have your name written in heaven? You might not do great things for God. You know, but your name's still there. There are people who will come someday and they'll knock the door and they'll say, Lord, we cast out demons in your name. We done great things in your name. And the Lord will say to them, I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. The Lord knows you this morning. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. For the sake of time this morning, the remaining three spiritual blessings of this wonderful, wonderful chapter. The sixth blessing is there and it's this. It's in verse 9. Knowing the will of God. The mystery of his will. The seventh is that he's brought us into his Wonderful inheritance. Verse 11. We've been grafted in to this great inheritance. If he has sealed us by his spirit. Verse 13 tells us that. So let's just take a wee moment just to take a look at those very, 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 very briefly. And then we'll go. What is this mystery? What's the great mystery? Now if you were speaking to some priest, he'll tell you all those things that we should never really look into. These great mysteries of scripture. They're the greatest mystery of all. It's how God can love a sinner like me. That's the greatest mystery. That's not the mystery that Paul's talking about here. He's, the mystery he's speaking about is the great union 
that Christ has with his church. The angels look on and they don't fully understand it. As wonderful created heavenly beings as they are, they don't fully understand it. It's about the union between Christ and his church and his bride. You know, whenever you think back as well to, to Mary that day in the garden, she was speaking to two angels. And yet, if you had come here this morning, tell them, if you were coming up the road here this morning and were stopped along the way by two angels, and they began to tell you things about the Lord. Oh my! You've been running in here and you're going, I need to testify! I need to testify! <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, you know. But you know, even as these angels were speaking to Mary, where was she taken up with? She wasn't much interested in them. She said, where's my Lord? What have they done with my Lord? Have you taken him? Do you know where he's lying? Tell me I'll go and get him and I'll bring him back. She was totally consumed with him. That's what always makes me wonder about these people that are totally consumed with the angels and all that goes on, feathers and platforms and all that sort of nonsense. Get a grip. It's Christ and him crucified. Amen. And Bless nothing you. comes close. Do you think for one moment that I'm going to be taken up to the streets of gold and all the wonders and splendors of heaven when he's there? Do you think I'm going to get excited about the heavenly choir singing holy, holy, holy when he's there? I mean, no disrespect, but even my loved ones here are there. And I love it, I can't wait to see them. But I'm not excited about seeing them a wee bit. But the most thing that's important is this I will see him. Nice. He is there. Glory to God. That's them. They don't understand that. And listen to me, saints. The sinners out there don't understand that neither. When you start getting excited about Jesus Christ, they look at you glazed over. They don't understand. God help them to understand that one day that they will know that wonderful mystery. Oh, what a mystery it is. Folks, it's a pleasure. Not all, only that, but this, there's the great inheritance which is ours. What a spiritual blessing. Peter tells us in 1 Peter 1 and verse 4, that we are called to an inheritance incorruptible and undefined that faileth not away. Hallelujah. Folks, I'm sure some of you have had wee inheritances throughout your life and probably most of spent. You get it, you go, oh, what do we want to do? Cruise, car, house, whatever. It doesn't last very long. This is an inheritance, but it doesn't need to top up. It's there forever and ever and ever. It's unfading, it's uncorruptable, it's undefiled, and it's reserved for you in heaven someday. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to consider it this morning. We know we've been about here because we have that wonderful, abundant life here. But we've got eternal life in heaven yet to come. And finally, verse 13, it says that we are sealed by his spirit. Close this in yet again. I think, that's, I think that's truly wonderful. We have trusted Christ. We have heard the truth, the gospel of our salvation. We have believed it. And now we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's yeah, another, yeah, sure, as it were, belt and braces for you. You know, when he holds you in the hollow of his hand, as he said earlier on, no one will pluck you out. You can't fall out of the hollow of his hand. I know some people would like to try to, and they try to go their own way and do their own thing for whatever reason. But you know what I think is wonderful? And I'm borrowing this of Martin Lloyd-Jones. He says that the Holy Spirit authenticates our status of children of God when we are saved and we are sealed. Sealed. What does that mean? You have got the rubber stamp, the marking of heaven all over you. Your heads. You've been bought with a wonderful, wonderful price. And that price is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And folks, let me tell you something. There is nothing better than the blood of the Lord Jesus. Nice There's sure. nothing greater than the blood of the Lord Jesus. No wonder we should pray the blood. We should plead the blood. Because in it, we are saved. In it, we are washed. In it, we are sealed. Glory to God. And all the wonderful blessings flow from it. What a blessing is ours this morning. And it's now this afternoon. So even this morning we can declare it. And this afternoon we can declare it. And later on this evening we can declare it. The blessing is ours. But we can say with an absolute assurance, 
the greatest spiritual blessing that you'll ever know here. I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Amen. Folks, if you get the opportunity today, read through Ephesians chapter 1 and remind yourself again and again of those eight wonderful spiritual blessings which are yours not only just today, but guess what? They're there tomorrow and the rest of the week and the rest of the time that you're here on this little planet of ours. And whenever you make your way to heaven, then you'll see the fullness of every single one of them. But the greatest blessing of all this morning is this. Not what you have in your bank, not what you have in your back pocket, not what's sitting in your driveway, not even what you have around your feet, not even what you have in your home. It's knowing that your name is written in glory and that you're his. Glory to God. He is ours. Praise your name, Lord. Hands, bless you, Lord. Oh, we bless you, Lord, this morning for all of the spiritual blessings that you have blessed us with. Lord, we can surely say, in spite of all the circumstances that we might have to face, we are truly a blessed, blessed people. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us in to this wonderful inheritance. Lord, we deserve absolutely none of it. But, Lord, you have given us so, so very, very much. And, Lord, this morning, we would just bear the name once again. And thank you, Lord, from grateful hearts, we would say, Lord, thank you for, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for sealing me. Thank you, Lord, for adopting me and keeping me and holding me in the hollow of your hand. Lord, as we delight ourselves in that, but Lord, our mind often drifts to those, even of our kith and kin, our blood, Lord, who still aren't saved, still outside of Christ. Lord, the greatest thrill that we would know within our hearts would see them saved as well. Lord, will you grant us household salvation, each and every single one of us. Lord, I pray, Lord, as our heads are bowed here in this house, and for those that are watching at home, remember at later time, Lord, we all have those that are still outside of the kingdom. Lord, will you bring them in, I pray, in Jesus' lovely name. Father, sometimes where our words seem so hollow, our words don't seem to make any form of difference at all. But Lord, one word from you. Lord, I pray as I often pray, give them Damascus Road experiences. Stop them dead in their tracks from where they're going. And Lord, the sad reality is this this morning, that they're on a road to ruin. Lord, stop them, I pray, before they go further down that road and the devil destroys them. Lord, I thank you that you have a hope and there's a blessing in you. And Lord, you have a, a much better way for each and every single one. Save them, Lord, and deliver them. And Lord, bring them into your wonderful, wonderful kingdom. Lord, we just pray for our little company that's gathered here. As David's prayed this morning, there's some have been about, Lord, that need a touch. Lord, I pray that your healing hand will be upon each and every single one, yes. even before they go. Lord, there are those at home who would just love to be here this morning. Pray, Lord, that you would put your hand upon them. There's others, Lord, that are on holiday. Lord, give them a blessed time, Lord. Bring them back safe. There are those who are working this morning. Keep them safe there, Lord. And Father, I pray that your, your hand will be upon them in blessing and in keeping. And Lord, if there's maybe even some that are in a hump this morning, didn't want to be out this morning, Lord, even speak to them as well too, Lord. Fill them with the joy of the Lord once again. Because, Lord, some of our circumstances, oh, Lord, they can put us into bad form and bad twist and all the same. But, Lord, you know us all together. So, Father, I pray your blessing upon each and every single one. Lord, we just ask that you would help us this evening again as we come once again. And, Lord, bless your people tonight with your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Lord. God's good. Glory to God. Praise you, Lord.